All right, humans. So here is a group of data relating to one single person. So lines two through six. All these variables relate to Edward. His last name is Norton. Age is 18. Balance is 99. And he's single. All right. So this block relates to Marla and all her properties and Tyler and all his properties. All right. So there's a problem with this code. If we run it, it's going to crash. It's going to say first name. This name was defined previously and cannot be redefined. So there can't be two variables of the same name here. They have to be unique. So we have to put a two in front of this and all of her other variables because age will conflict with Edward's age. All right. So we're going to keep doing this, keep doing all this renaming. It's a pain. And you know, once this gets to three or more people, even two or more people, it's already cumbersome as you can see by my typing. So uh, Strux will help us solve this problem of not needing to sort of rename all the variables and all the properties of someone and also keep variables together. For example, there's nothing stopping someone from doing this. Going to put Edward's age way down here. Going to put his last name mixed in this pile for some reason. Right? The variables can be scattered. In fact, they're scattered in space is the mental model that you should be thinking of. But when we use structs, structs will help us keep related pieces of data together, right? Related pieces of data, meaning that, right, one block, one unit, and it will help us not need to do all these renamings and having all these variables, all right? So structures, also known as structs, will help solve this problem with a ton of variables and them needing to be grouped together as a single unit. All right. So first we have to define a struct. So define struct, the name of it, it can be anything you want. But in this case, since we're modeling people, that's what I'm going to name it. I'm going to name this person. And after that is another set of parentheses indicating all the fields of the struct. So I'm going to say FN, this, the name is just completely arbitrary. It can be anything you want. In this case, I'm going to say it's FN short for first name, LN for last name, age balance and single, all right? Age balance and single. There we go. All right. So we defined a struct, but now we had to make instances of that struct. So in analogy to real life, this is the blueprint. And now we have to enact that blueprint. So to do that, it's make dash the name of the struct. So person, and then we give it all of these field names. So let's do one for Edward. So Edward, so Edward Norton 1899 and single is true. All right. So we condensed all these lines into one unit of code. That is all grouped together. All right, let's put this into a variable. Let's call it P1. And let's do the rest for all the others. All right, and copy and paste this. Let's do one for Marla. P2. P2, there we go. Marla, so last name is Singer. 24. Uh, let's see, 24. Balance is 55. And false for single. Okay false. And let's just do the last person for Tyler. Okay. So over here, Tyler, Jordan, 18, zero and false. Okay. All right. So just to recap what we did one last time, we created a person with all of their properties in a single line and grouped together in one cohesive unit. Whereas before, this could have been way over here, right? Anyone could have just done this. And if you want to look for Edward's age, well, you had to scan through all the way down here and go, oh, here it is. He's 18. All right. That's a pain. Strux, again, force people to create persons with all the field names grouped together in one block, right? It's hard to sort of uh, move Edward's stuff and get it mixed up with someone else's. All right. Secondly, all the fields are in this person struct. We're going to explain how to get them out in a second. But again, we don't have to create all these variable names to model a person. 
that's all stored into this one block. All right, so now let's see how we can get them out. So to get the pieces out of a struct, it's going to be the name of the struct, so person, right, right here, and then dash the field name, dash, and then one of these field names, all right? So let's say fn, fn for first name, and we're going to give it a person. So we got to give it this Edward, but since it's stored in P1, this variable, I can just give it P1. All right, so if I hit Control R to run this code, I should get Edward. All right, uh, whoops, I need to rename Tyler to three. So we should get Edward over here. All right, so we can get his last name too by saying person dash LN P1. Again, P1 is Edward. We're storing this make person into the variable P1. So Edward Norton. All right, we can also get the others. So let's get, um, let's see, person dash balance. And then we're gonna say P3, all right? Hit Control R, we should get zero because that's Tyler's. P3 is Tyler and his balance is zero, all right? So that's how we're getting this zero, all right? Right over here. Let's get Marla's properties. Let's get the single property. So down here, we're gonna say person dash, let's see, single. And then we're gonna give it P2, because again, P2 is stored. And that's Marla, there we go. Hit Control R and we get false, because again, she's taken, right? False, all right. Lastly, there's a predicate function to test whether something is a person. And that'll come in later, but I just thought I'd introduce that now. So it's person, right, the name of the struct, and then a question mark, and then whatever we pass in, it will return true or false, whether that something is a person. So is this a person? Well, no, it's gonna return false because this is a string, all right? So we get false here. If we do person question mark and give it one of these variables, which are persons, right? Well, we're gonna get true, all right? So there we go, true. No surprises there. Okay. So what we effectively done is that we created our own data type. All right. So you're already familiar with the ones that come built into Racket. So they're called primitives and they are numbers. Numbers, the strings, booleans, and in the case of Racket images. What we just did here by defining the struct is that we're saying we're creating our own types of data, right? of data and they are person right in analogy to functions right classical functions such as uh, addition subtraction division multiplication string of hand uh, what else overlay for images etc right when we define a function area of circle are and then times pi r r, right? We added our own operation, area of circle. All right, just a way to think about the impacts of what we just did. So structs are just really collections of data, all right? A person is just a collection of strings, uh, numbers, and booleans. And here's the meaning of them. Here's first name, last name, and the age is 18, etc. Functions are collections of operations. In this case, the formula is a bit too simple, but we are collecting pi and two radiuses and we're multiplying them all together to get the area of a circle. And it's the meshing of these two functions operating on data, right? Functions operating on data that creates apps and programs. But anywho, back to structs, someone defined another struct called dog. It's gonna have a name, an age, and a breed, all right. And let's just make a dog, store it in D1. So the name is gonna be Flipper, age is seven, and the breed is going to be a pug. 
So to get the pieces out, uh, let's see, it's dog, that's the name of the struct, dash the field names. So dog dash name, and then we're gonna say D1. You can guess what this will produce, right? This will produce, hit control R, flipper, all right? What if we do dog dash age? Let's see, D1, guess what this produces? This produces the number seven, all right? No surprises here because the dog is stored in the variable D1 and we're passing it to the dog dash age function. But what happens if we pass a human into it, right? A person, I mean. So let's pass in P1. P1 is way over here. It's a person and person does have an age field. So what do you expect this to do? All right, just take a wild guess. I'm gonna hit control R and it's gonna crash. It's gonna say dog dash age expects a dog given person, right? Given this make person thing. So dog dash age, in order for it to do it, in order for it to do its job, it needs a dog. We didn't give a dog, we gave it P1, which is up here, and that is a person. So this flat flat out just crashes. In the future videos, I'm going to uh, go over the way to work around this. Uh, in short, you have to use predicate functions and conditionals. So dog question mark of P1, we know that's going to be false because P1 is up here and that's a person. So if I hit control run, that's going to be false. But if I do dog question mark, right, of D1, that's going to be true. All right, no surprises there. All right, so final recap of structs. I've gone ahead and pasted the formal definition of it here. So let's review the correspondences of what we just did. So to create a struct, it's open parenthesis, define that struct, and then the name of the struct. In this case, we created a dog struct and a person struct, all right? And after that is another set of parentheses where, where you put the field names. So in this case, it's name, age, and breed for the dog, and for the person, it's FN, LN, age, balance, and etc. all right? So when you define a struct, the programming language will create a bunch of other functions for you. It will give you a way to create instances of that struct by make dash and then the name of that struct, followed by some pieces of data that match the number of field names, all right? So here, make dash dog, right? Make dash and then the name of the struct. So this is the name of the struct. And for person, make dash and then the name of the struct, which is person, all right? Hopefully no surprises there. That's how you create instances of that struct. And by the way, they have to match. So here we have three field names, but what happens if we give four to create a dog? If we run it, it's gonna say, let's see, make dog expects only three arguments, but only found four. Yeah, because we only have three field names, All right? So the number of pieces of data that you use to make a dog or make any struct has to match via number of field names, right? All right. So to get the pieces out of a struct, it's the name of the struct dash the field name. So in this case, the name of the struct dash the field name right here. And then we pass it an instance of that struct and it will get that piece out. In this case, this is flipper, this is age, and up here in person, uh, let's see, person dash FN, we get Edward and Ellen, it's Norton, all right? Okay. Lastly, it introduces a predicate function, which is the name of the struct in a question mark. So name of the struct, make dog in a question mark, give it anything, and it will produce true or false, uh, whether that thing is a dog or not, right? An instance of the dog struct, right? A make dog or a make person, all right? So in conclusion, structs really just group together related pieces of data that should be considered one cohesive unit, right? That naturally sort of come together. Like for example, an X and a Y. If I have an X point in space, you might as well give me the Y point. If I'm gonna order a steak from a restaurant, well, you might as well give me a fork, all right? Things that naturally go together. And that's structs. Thank you for watching, He-Man. If you wish to interact with more of your kind, join our Discord link in the description or on screen. If you want to aid in my quest for world domination, consider hitting the sub button.
Thumbs up if you enjoyed it, thumbs down if you didn't. Any questions, comments, or suggestions, fire away below. Also, check out the annotations on screen for the next relevant video.